Allez-y, madame. Opportunity to tell a brief story of the political prisoners and their families in Eritrea. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Zadal Johannes. I am a sister-in-law of Petro Solomon, one of the 11 parliamentarians who were arrested in September 2001. In 2001, a group of 15 high officials, later known as a group of 15, which included 11 MPs, asked President Isaias to implement parliamentary procedures in the day-to-day -day running of the government. The president ignored their request summarily. Then they opted to write an open letter to him. Basically, the open letter to the president was the culmination of their repeated requests to hold regular meeting of the Central Council and National Council of the People's Front for Democracy and Justice, which were well overdue. The president, as chairman of both the Central and the National Council, would not convene the meetings. Instead, he put the 11 parliamentarians out of the 15 in jail. The others went into exile. The 11 parliamentarians were put in jail in September 2001 and have not been heard of since. The Eritrean authorities have refused to confirm their whereabouts or their health status to their families. Now allow me to talk and change the focus on the close families and children of those unjustly incarcerated parliamentarians. I would like to introduce you to two youngsters whose parents are suffering in the prisons of Eritrea. Ibu. Ibu is the only son of Asir Fsaden and Mohammed Sharifo, two of 11 parliamentarians who have been jailed since 2001. The whereabouts of Aster and Sherifo are unknown. Ibu continues to live with his heartbreaking episode of his life. In 2010, he escaped from Eritrea. Now he lives in Netherlands. Having escaped from Eritrea, he says he can't expect the day-to-day -day thoughts of his parents. Maaza. Maaza is the youngest daughter of Petro Solomon, one of the G15 prisoners of conscience, and Astia Johannes, my beloved sister. Maaza was only three when her parents were detained. Her mother was in the United States to pursue her studies. When the government security agents came from home to arrest her father, as Aster returned to Eritrea to look after her children, government officials arrested her as soon as her plane landed at Asmara Airport. Maaza was at the airport waiting to welcome her mother. It pains me to hear Maaza talk of lost times growing up without the love of her mother and father. Pl please allow me now to say a few words about my sister. Sometimes I break down and cry when I receive pieces of incomplete news of my beloved sister, Aster, from back home. They tell me that she feels the emptiness of her days in her cell by singing gospel songs we used to sing as children in our family house. Most days I imagine her sitting alone in the corner of her cell, rotting away. Who would have imagined a bright, energetic, intelligent woman 
who was overwhelmed by the love for her children and her husband would end up in jail. Esther gave up her use to fight alongside her comrades and her husband. would end up in jail. Thank you. This is not fair. I often think of her jailed husband whose only crime is to ask the president to change his ways and introduce reforms. I think of her jailed firstborn whose, whose firstborn son whose crime was to attempt to flee the country in order to join his siblings in the US. I think of my beloved sister, whose crime was only for returning to Eritrea to look after her kids. Why can't life be fairer to her, her children, her husband, and the rest of the close family members? Ladies and gentlemen, the political traditions of debate and discussions in your countries are still alive and well. You do speak out on issues of conscience, a right many of you have. Isn't that how democratic politics works? Eritrea is different. To borrow expressions from Baroness Glenis Kinnock, a longtime friend of Eritrea, much of the government's abuses contravene their own laws. Eritrea's constitution contains numerous human rights safeguards, but this and the very principle of the rule of law are conveniently and fre frequently ignored. Many of us who lived abroad were not present when our country needed us during the armed struggle for liberation. Many of us are not there yet when those heroes of our, ours who liberate our country need us now in their moment of despair. This moral dilemma, dilemma needs to be rectified. We should help those prisoners of conscience regain their freedom and respect for their fundamental rights. I hope you two will play your part. Thank you for listening. <laughs>